Hey there, School of Tomorrow students. I'm going to be walking backwards in time, starting with this PBS special that I just saw on DVD called JFK. Now, I've studied the JFK story quite a bit already, but this was new to me. I hadn't seen it. And so I'm going to start with that, roll back through time, and jump to Facebook. And I'm going to talk again mostly about Portland. Kind of a city in the news these days. If you scroll back in the timeline, you'll see. And I also want to talk a little bit more about Critical Path. And I'm going to, because I'm talking place based and I believe in autobiography for anchoring that, you're going to hear a little bit more about my life story, which might be a little bit boring to some of you. And to some of you, it's like, why do I just use slides? It seems like there's mostly still pictures. And in this day and age, isn't it all about video and everything moving? And especially that I'm in geometry. And animated geometry, that, why so much stills? Why that format? And it's like, this is what I evolved into, coming from Jupiter Hotel, not Jupiter Notebook, but if you go way back to, like, November of 2018. And this is a shot from 2018, January. There's Dr. D and Patrick Barton and their dog, or Patrick's, the, the Barton's dog, Quinn, on the couch. Sometimes I blow up the side. So this is going into Flickr. See, I've got my Facebook tied to my Flickr account a lot, and I jump back and forth a lot, right? So let's let's go back a little bit more in this time frame, and let me talk a little bit about what's going on in Portland. That's <clears throat> that's Leela before she changed her name and Melody, right? Now, Melody was visiting faculty recently, and Leela is also faculty. And these are, um, I would say they're both Asian scholars to some degree. But then I use the word Asian a little bit strangely because sometimes in the past I've referred to myself as Asian, and people are like, wait, you just went to high school in the Philippines. You're like this white guy who went to high school in the Philippines. That doesn't make you Asian. But the thing is... That's not all that I did in Asia, and there's this whole thing about what is our freedom around ethnicity to specify, like what does it take for me to call myself European even, if I wanted to claim to that. I think here in America I can get away with calling myself something like Swedish or Irish, and I'm thinking of actual ancestors when I say these things, Swedish or Irish. Let's go to Facebook now. Scroll a little further down. Speaking of somebody very white looking, this police officer, I just this morning listened to his interview with a pretty competent uh, network interviewer. She was from a local TV station, I think KGW, right? Sorry if I got that wrong. In fact, I should click on the YouTube here and just get my credits right. In case you want to go back and watch this yourself. It was a very impressive interview, partly for its length. It was um, constrained, like she wanted to ask about the relationship to the federal government. Excuse me. I'm trying to turn this off here. Sound-wise, I'm not going to go into the sound. I'm not going to cite this one in any great detail. Now, for extra money, I could turn off the ads, is my understanding. But I'm just kind of like doing what I can with free media, and, and you'll see I haven't up till now anyway monetized any of these YouTube. So there's the author, and yeah, KGW News. Okay, so this was a good interview, and what I'm taking away from it, I'll just point out on Facebook here. Um, he's very correct in saying it's not his job, and he's not paid enough or he's not trained to like figure out where the reallocation, how that's going to work, the reallocation. Now, I call it refund education. And you know how defund, people didn't like the associations of that. Doesn't that just mean abolish? And refund, that sounds kind of like you're giving your money back. But in my case, that connotation is a little bit intentional because as you may know, if you've been watching my YouTube, there's a little bit of an edge to it and that I stand behind this curriculum of interesting math and logic, uh, which hasn't seen much light of day inside 
of corporate America, I'll call it. And how I know that is I've been working with the schools. I'm an observer with pretty good sense of what's going on. And like I would know, I think, if I was wrong about this. And therefore, I think, and because I think this, because I'm like in this cult, you could say, we think our information is so important that not sharing it is why we think everyone deserves a refund. But it's more of a Gnostic tale, I think. It's more like if you got born on the hell that is planet Earth, you deserve compensation right off the bat. We need to like refund that you're even here. You know, we need to help sustain your stay here, and we're sorry that you got sent here. That would be more hospitable, right? If the people here, when someone new was born, we had like a ritual, and it's like, we're sorry you're in such a hellish ghetto planet, but we're going to do our best to ensure you have a good stay here nevertheless, right? We're working on it. Like, we've been working on our hospitality skills as a planet, and when new humans or sentient beings show up, we have a sense of being a host, right? That'd be pretty different, wouldn't it? That would be a very different uh, kind of aesthetic, but I kind of like the sound of it myself. So I'm scrolling back through what I'm very proud of, my photo history here. And this is, again, place-based. This is mostly around, in and around Portland, Oregon. There's the KBU. That's a local radio station. It's like covered in feathers, it looks like. It's not real feathers, but I think because it's a float. You know how floats are supposed to look like in the Rose Parade? I think it's supposed to allude to like flower petals. And so this would be that radio station's, by default, this would be their, their float. And uh, by the way, I've been listening to today the People's Party stuff. Let's see if I still have my internet connection. Yeah, I've been listening to the People's Party in pretty much real time, some of it. Let's see if it picks up where it lets off. Again, I don't need to show sound. So this is this is an event going on right now in, in Cyber World. So concluding with a little bit of autobiography, right? I wanted to show you... Um, like when when the 60s were happening, the so-called 60s, a riotous time in U.S. history, I was blissfully um, ensconced in Rome, Italy, having a great time. And my dad was working for the govern, government of Libya but with, with a U.S. private company, and maybe the U.N. at first, I don't remember, at, in the EUR. And then we moved to Viale Perioli. I've talked about all this before. And then they, you know, he's an independent freelance kind of planner kind of guy. And when that wound up in Libya, it was got to find something new. And that's when we ended up in the Philippines. And that's where I get some of the Asian-ness of my perspective, in my opinion, right? And I also, because people play with pronouns a lot, I like to say, well, you know, if I go and live in Africa now for the rest of my life, like if I go to Cape Town tomorrow and I live to be 82, and I'm still in Cape Town, at what point can I start acknowledging that I'm, I'm more African? And the fact is, I've already lived in South Africa for months at a time, and Lesotho, and like I'm proud of that quote-unquote heritage, and that there can be a feeling maybe of the nativists, it's like you don't have a right to be proud, you just came here a few times, right? But I don't think that's the attitude we want to encourage. I think when a person goes through an area and picks it up and gets to be partly that, if they feel some innate pride in doing that, like I'm proud of being a Portlander, it's like civic pride, that's part of my ethnicity. And I think we should encourage that. So the fact that I also proudly talk about how I'm Asian, and yet I'm this white guy with white skin and all that, and I don't even speak an Asian language really, right? But I think I speak I speak English in a way that's sympathetic to Asia, you could say. And so that might not sound like English English, which might not even sound friendly to Russia, right? I think the language will change in meaning and character depending on the aesthetics of the user over time. I think the zeitgeist kind of works that way. It, it, it gives a, like a force field in which word meanings 
alter over time based on things we can't see. Looking at a bunch of beers here, this is a new establishment in my neighborhood. It will give Belmont Station competition, but as Glenn and I were discussing, there's reasons to go to both, at least in my case. I'm very happy to find this, though, and it's a joint to food carts, which are open even in pandemic times. We're able to maintain social distance. And this is not the one that we actually went to that day, but we went to the asylum downtown. And in fact, since I'm going backwards in time, there was Glenn. This will take us there. So I'll end with me at the asylum. Now, we've talked about that before. It explains the name of the street I live near, the big one, Hawthorne Boulevard. Because Dr. Hawthorne, he, on behalf of the state of Oregon, sort of under subcontract, was helping Oregon, the new state, have its first, like, official mental hospital, you could call it. And it was all um, of two or three, it was quite a big establishment, the maps I've seen, all of two or three, what we today call city blocks, maybe more. And so this is that area downtown, or it's not really downtown. That's a word we almost always uh, reserve for the west side of the Willamette River, downtown. But we're, on the, we're down close to the river on the east side. And the, um, the culture of Portland, like most cities, is diverse. Once you zoom in, it's kind of like a fractal or like a mandel bulb. All the world's cultures are concentrated in this, not, I'm exaggerating, not all the world's cultures, but we're able to get Burmese food. Glenn and I had food from Guyana, which very helpfully explained itself on the menu, like, or right at the food pod, there's the map of Guyana, which is the north coast of South America, right? Not far from Venezuela and all that. We have a Venezuelan food cart at El Mercado. So food cart culture is pretty big here in Portland, and it's uh, where we get the word food pod, and really these are bismos in a way. They're like business mobiles, especially if they're not just trailers. A lot of food carts are trailers, and it really makes sense to put a trailer here. Because once you're here, there's no better place, right? you got your gas hookup. You've got everything you need to be a successful food cart. So why even keep the wheels? Just take a trailer there. You don't need to go around. You need to keep your, your thing there, right? But if you want to stay mobile, I'm saying, then you're going to want to have something on wheels. And whether it feeds people or what does it do, logistics. I always think of the Food Not Bombs guy and his van. Like he shows up in Louisiana soon after Hurricane Katrina to help as best he can, right? He's like um, an organizer, a community organizer, and he's good at it, so I'm glad he did that, even without, like, quote, official permission. So here's a food cart in front of the Third Eye, which is a famous establishment, but it was never allowed to actually sell cannabis because it's too close to a school if you go directly behind it. As the arrow, as the as the crow flies, you come to a campus, and the city ordinance was such that it could not compete with its nearest neighbors in that respect. She kind of killed it in that sense, I guess. Like that's my story anyway. More place-based education. There's the Pauling House on the right. You can sort of see the Alpha Helix, which commemorates Linus Pauling who lived here as a young boy on the right side, the Linus Pauling House. This is some new public art, I guess you could call it. That's proprietary storefront art being marred by unwelcome uh, superimposition of another layer. There's a lot of War of the Layers here on Hawthorne. And I'm just winding up here. I just wanted to take us to a home base, which is Mount Tabor looking west towards the main downtown. This is a flight of steps. I'll go up or down. This was an, a down flight. So there's Portland as, as it looks today. Looking west, it's a little bit hazy in this picture, and I come back to this park a lot, so some of my pictures are sharper than others, depending on the condition of 
the weather and my lens actually. This is kind of an idyllic picture to end on. It looks kind of like a a parallel civilization kind of like in Mist or in Uru, right? All right. Talk to you soon and uh, hang in there guys. Oh wait. For those who didn't just click off, I wanted to say I did get uh, a link to Bucky's FBI file. Let's see, where is that? Glad I remembered that. A little bit further up in, I don't know, it's before the police interview here. Yesterday. Oh, gosh. Where is it? Do I have to hit reload? I'm going to know what I'm going to do, I think, is... Maybe I'll edit out that goodbye because clearly I didn't sh I didn't sign off and skip ahead. I'll, I'll have I have one more topic. I have one more topic. Uh, Bucky's FBI file. Scrolling back here in Facebook, I just wanted to pull it up. Okay, get, there we go. So there's the man, and we got Buckminster Fuller's FBI file. I checked this over. They're mostly concerned about what's in critical path, and that's the last thing. Actually, no, no. They're mostly concerned that he's met with a couple Russians, and he's been to the Soviet Union. That's enough to get on FBI's watch list, you could say. And I, I said at the beginning of this video that critical path was also a little bit scary, not just because it has money stuff in it, but because it talks about Cold Warrior topics you know, armaments and Russian versus USA versus USSR type stuff, right? It's a Cold Warriors, but he was kind of an insider on that, as this FBI file kind of hints at. Like, he was someone who did work with the government, but then also had relationships with other entities, right? So he got around. He, he traveled around the world a lot. And we're not supposed to think that all of the data is here. There's going to be more. Okay. So that was fun. All right. Talk to you soon.